And in the face of all the developments that took place and led to it, why don't we present, why don't we pre discuss these issues more intensely and let's see if there are new facts that are making it necessary for government to change its policy on the issue. Okay. That's the stand. We would like you to listen to what the uh, minister and the uh, registrar of JAM said in a moment, but were there any vice chancellors who were present in that, uh, they said it was 2016 combined policy meeting on admissions to universities, polytechnics, and other higher institutions? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that meeting is usually uh, an omnibus. All vice chancellors and registrars and admission officers of universities are invited to that meeting. Now, uh, what normally happens is that you decide, the meeting decides on a cutoff, and it hasn't changed in the last two or three years. It's been 180 minimum. And so, they, you know, a long list is sent to the universities. For the private universities, these are not, in fact, issues, because they never have more than, they, except a very few that have uh, been established for a very long time. Most private universities are permanently sourcing for students until the last day they close shop. So this is not in fact an issue for them because not only do they not have up to their capacity, they have to shop for them. So when you put a flat, a flat rate like this and insist that they cannot do certain things, it doesn't even apply because they don't have enough. Those who can come may not have the money to pay the fees. Does this uh, affect the autonomy of universities? Well, the point, you know, what the to autonomy is about, what affects Senate? The Senate of a university is the regulating body for all academic issues in a university. And what it is saying is that if you call the vice chancellor and and instruct the, you put the vice chancellors together, you instruct them that this is the policy on this issue, they have to take it back to the Senate of the university individually and uh, make sure that Professor, it is... Professor, you have to enlighten okay. us, though. Uh, because when we talk about post-UTME, what comes to mind, a lot of people's minds, the fact that in the past, uh, JAM was accused of not having done a very, you know, a very proper process or a very credible process where it was that people could sit for exams for other people and so universities had to be sure that those people who JAM was sending to them or those people who actually are going to be admitted into their universities are the people who, you know, were said to have passed those exams. But it would seem that Jan is saying now that, you know, we've cleaned, out, we've cleaned up the process as much as we can. It's a lot better than it used to be. Right now we're saying it's a lot more credible than it used to be. We've done a lot of work there. Uh, and we don't think that there's a need for this post-UTME. Are universities disagreeing with Jan on that? Yes, certainly. In fact, you know, one thing that I'm praying for, especially because of the person who has Jan, is that we all come out of this uh, beautifully. JAMP has been doing a very great job, and the person in charge has, in fact, made a lot of sacrifice to bring it to the point that it is in now. So I'm a little bit sad that we are at this point. But having said so, you remember that there were lots of problems during the last examination. Many that were not due to his fault, they were things that were associated with the centers that uh, harbored the students for the examination. So, in fact, I was thinking that this year, the universities will be encouraged to, in fact, do their own screening, because it was obvious that there were problems. And that's what the universities are saying, that this year in particular, when there seem to be problems. Let us help you to, in fact, confirm. Okay. And you will then have, you know, you put the two together, you will have something more genuine. We would like, yeah. uh, like you to listen to this yes. uh, and then respond to it. I think it is very, a very shameful thing if universities are doing this in order to raise money. It's wrong. It should not be at the expense of the students. 
You agree with me? Yes. You agree with me? Yes. This is to put into consideration that is, you are supposed to consider people who sat for the tests in foreign countries. You consider the distance and the financial implication for their having to come to sit for the examination. And if you can do this for Nigerians in foreign countries, you should do it also for Nigerians who are within the country. No one will go below 180 this year, but some universities can go above it. 200, I know if I will not take less than 200, Lagos will not take less than 200, the burden, the same thing. That's one stance, but 180 for others. But this year we have more than enough candidates who scored 180. Over 1.25 million candidates scored 180 and above. So we get enough candidates to take, if they are serious, they will get them. What do you think of that? Yeah, you see, the, there is categorization. Take, for instance, the public universities, particularly the federal universities. Uh, I know that you, uh, UI, for instance, will have nothing short of 30,000, and it has the carrying capacity. Uh, the university I came from, before I became vice chancellor, would have something in the range of 30 to 35,000, out of which it can only take about 10%. 10% carrying capacity of the total number of applicants. So out of that, it has to decide, using certain criteria, particularly merit, to decide what is the cutoff for each of the causes that students are applying for. So they don't ever manage to admit all that qualified. So they want to set criteria of the, the UTME, the post-UTME, the school certificate result, and put all of that together match it, then have cutoffs, then proceed to that to do oral interview. Okay. And in the private universities, it isn't in fact that that system doesn't go that way because they seldom have enough, much right. less begin to talk of excess. All right. We'll be back in a moment. Yeah.